today on Be Something Wonderful. Do nothing except this, manifesting the Neville Goddard way. I am your host, Tom Karen, and this is the Be Something Wonderful studio of higher consciousness, where we help you level up and become the best version of yourself. Creators, welcome back. I've heard from several of you now that said, Tom, I've been affirming, I've been imagining my wish fulfilled, but then I begin to wonder what else should I be doing or what should I do? in addition to imagining or affirming. And guys, today I wanna answer this question because I've talked about this before, but I really wanna hit it like we've never hit it before. Here's the thing. When you ask, what should I do? You're implying that you're not in your desired ends. You're implying that you're focused on the means and not the desired or imagined end. Do you hear this? It's an implication that you need to do something to figure out the how or the when or the where of your manifestation in the 3D world. When you imagine it fulfilled, when you affirm it, when you rest in that conviction and assumption that it's done, it's done. It's yours. It's a metaphysical reality, just as real, if not more real than the 3D reality that you're living in. Right. And so, so the question, this question, what should I do implies that you're focused on the means and not the desired imagined end. Right. Remember, what are you asked to do? You're asked to define the end and dwell there. Define the end and occupy it. Define your imagined end, your wish fulfilled and rest there. Rest in the fulfillment, in the state or the mansion, as scripture says, or the dwelling place, right? This is what Jesus said, in my father's house house are many mansions, or in other words, dwelling places, right? And and, and he says, if this were not so, I I would have told you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. Wow! In that one verse, in, in this John 14, 3 in Scripture, Jesus explains imagination, rising in consciousness to, to the conscious awareness of your I am, imagining your wish fulfilled, and then walking in that faith, not by sight, but by faith. And then you'll merge with your I am, and then that will become a manifested reality in 3D. That's powerful. You, so you're asked to define the end and dwell there, to have the desire and imagine its fulfillment, in other words, right? To have the desire and imagine its fulfillment. Leave the means, the how, the when, and the where to God. Because remember, you're imagining it and you're desiring it with God. Then why would you think you have to do something without God, right? Because when you say, what should I do? You're applying that you're going to go on your own. And that, that, you're not foca- that you're not focused on the imagined end, that you're focused on making it happen, right? So let's, let's take this a little further. This is what Romans 11, uh, 33 says. Oh, the depth of the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments and unfathomable his ways. So big right? The death of the riches, both of wisdom and knowledge, that's the heaven, that's the kingdom of heaven. That's the quantum field. That's the field of infinite possibilities, infinite intelligence. That's where all events are known and and how they all fit together. All the information and all the knowledge that ever is, was, or ever be is there. That's That's your I am, that's your imagination. That's true wealth because that's spiritual wealth right? Infinite intelligence, the quantum field, infinity, field of infinite possibilities, God, all that is, has unfathomable ways to make it happen. Remember, you don't have the broader perspective. You don't have the God or that all that is perspective to know how, how it possibly plays out. And at God's fingertips is every event, every single manifestation, every, every bit of energy that ever is, was, or ever be, at his fingertips to bring you all that you want. Yet you're trying, you're asking, what should I do? 
with, you're saying, okay, I imagined it with God. I had faith in, in I, with my wish fulfilled, but now I'm just going to abandon God and do something, so take some puny action in 3D to try to make it happen. Do you get this, guys? I am, this is what um, Jesus meant, right? I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. God never reveals the middle, never reveals the means, never reveals the how, right? His ways are mysterious and beyond finding out. That's what we're talking about. They're unfathomable. They're, they're beyond finding out. So when you desire something, that's God working through you. That's you and God together, right? You and God together asking with faith to desire what you want. That's you and your inner being joining together, you and God, asking together in faith. But then what happens? And this is big. But then you immediately begin to doubt it and ask, what should I do? Implying you need to do something without God. That's what creates the resistance of wanting desiring and needing. I need this to happen. I want this to happen. How is it going to happen? Right? And this is what else scripture says. Now to him who is able to do far more abundantly beyond all that we ask or think according to the power that works within us. Wow. So powerful. Look at this. Now to him, God, I am your imagination, who is able to do far more abundantly beyond all that we could ever ask or think or even imagine. We can't even imagine what he can do, and yet we want to do something. Wow! According to the power that works within us. It's that I am within us. It's through that power. God can't give you what you're not giving yourself. Right? So, so let's uh, hit this a little bit more. Bartimaeus receives his sight. So this is, in, this is one of the stories in, in, in the New Testament uh, that, that uh, is told in, in Mark, Luke, and Matthew, but very clearly in Mark. Now, Jesus, Jesus heals the sight of Bartimaeus, and then, of course, Bartimaeus becomes a disciple and starts following Jesus. But what's significant about this is that Jesus did somewhere around 40 healings that are mentioned in the Bible. Certainly he did more than that, but there's 40 healings that are mentioned by, uh, by Jesus are mentioned in scripture, eight of which were blind healings, healing somebody that was blind. Hear the significance of this. This gets back to what's this, what, what does it really mean to be blind? It means you, you're blind to your spiritual vision. It's not necessary. It, it's the metaphor. The physical blindness is a metaphor for being blind to the, your I am. Being blind to your I am awareness, that spiritual vision. And with the healing of Bartimaeus, it's, it's the only case where they actually name the blind person. We actually know his name is Bartimaeus. What's the significance? There must be some significance with this healing that they mention Bartimaeus out of all the other healings, right? The blind healings, which they, only, they, which they never mention who's being healed. They mention Bartimaeus. Well, it says in scripture, it starts out here, a blind beggar named Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, was sitting by the road. This is how it begins, a blind beggar, right? This brings us back to the power of now, when Eckhart Tolle opened up with a story of a, of a, of a person walking and he sees a blind beggar sitting on a box on the corner. And he, or he sees a beggar. He's not necessarily blind. He just sees a beggar sitting on a box. And the, the man asks him, the stranger asks the man, what, what it, what it, what's in that box? And the, and the beggar says, I don't know. I've never looked in it. I've been sitting on this box for 30 years. I'm sure there's nothing in the box. Right? Then the man urges him, the stranger urges him to look in the box. And lo and behold, the beggar looks in the box, and it's a box of gold. More riches than he could imagine. What's the, what's, what was Eckhart Tolle? What was the message? That that's your I am presence. That's your real power. That's your spiritual riches that, that you're sitting on, that you've never checked, that you're not aware of. That's what we're talking about here. A blind beggar. Not only is he blind, not only is he a beggar, but he's a blind beggar. So a beggar means you don't know, you're, you're going to always be begging, no matter how, much, how many riches you have in the physical world, unless you know that I am awareness. 
unless you know how to activate that imagination within you. That's the real riches, right? Named Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, was sitting by the road. Blind beggar, without spiritual vision, without that I am awareness, right? Eckhart Tolle, Power Now, talks about that. So what's the significance of the name Bartimaeus? Well, Bar, the first part, Bar, is the, is, it means the son of in Aramaic. It means the son of. The son of what? The son of Timaeus. Then what does Timaeus mean? Timaeus means, in, in he, the Hebrew meaning, meaning unclean, right? And unclean meaning the 3D world of limitation, of fear, unclean thoughts, right? And it also means in Latin and Greek to honor or to worship. So it's to worship or honor or think that the prize is the 3D world. Do you hear this? We worship the 3D, we worship idols, we worship a power outside of ourselves. Bartimaeus represents the beggar, the blind beggar who couldn't see with that spiritual vision, didn't know that I am awareness, right? And, and, and it was the son of Timaeus, the son of the 3D world, the son of limitation, the son of fear, the son of worshiping idols. So powerful. Well, let's take this a little further. And this is what it says. When he heard, when Bartimaeus heard that it was Jesus, the Nazarene, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Wow, what does that represent? Now this is Bartimaeus recognizing, starting to feel in his imagination as I am awareness. That's what heard means. Heard that it was Jesus, heard the feeling of the presence of your I am awareness. It's the beginning of, of feeling that spiritual power within you, right? Remember, he's blind, so, he's, so he heard it, right? Heard, felt, right? right? This is the idea, right? Jesus, the son of David, what does that mean? Well, that's the prophecy, the Savior. He, so, he's saying, so he's saying, Savior, have mercy on me or save me from this blind state or save me. This is you. Remember, you're playing all the parts. You're playing Jesus. You're playing Bartimaeus. You're playing, you're, 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 you're playing all of those parts. You're playing the crowd or the 3D world. Save me from this unwanted reality. Save me from this reality that I want to get rid of, right? And in, in the case of Bartimaeus, it's his sight, the savior from the unwanted realities or states of consciousness. This demonstrates that Bartimaeus had an absolute belief in faith and conviction in his I am. He had the audacity to call out, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Right? Wow! Have mercy. Daring to assume his wish already fulfilled. Daring to claim his sight is restored. That's what we're talking about. That's you claiming your wish fulfilled, assuming it. Let's, let's take this a little further. Many were stirred, and this is the, they're talking about the crowd now. The crowd, in this case, representing the 3D world, representing your 3D thoughts of lack, your 3D thoughts of doubt or fear. This is what happens, right, as you start to imagine your wish fulfilled. Many were sternly telling him to be quiet. These are your 3D thoughts saying, don't, you can't have that in imagination. You never had that. You're, you're pipe dreaming. You're on cloud nine. You can't get that, right? But he kept crying out all the more, son of David, have mercy on me. Hear this. This is powerful, but, he, but Bartimaeus it said, it said that he kept crying out all the more, meaning he persisted despite the, the thoughts of doubt the thoughts of limitation, the 3D world, not looking the way you want it to look, right? Looking like it's on those appearances, looking like it's something unwanted. He kept crying out all the more, son of David, savior, save me from the, have mercy on me, save me from this blindness or save me from this unwanted state. The crowd represents the 3D thoughts of fear, doubt, limitation, and lack. Remember, you play all the parts. You are Jesus. You're Bartimaeus and you're the crowd. You are the I am. You are the beggar, the blind beggar, and you are the crowd, right? Those thoughts of negativity, those thoughts of limitation. But he kept crying out all the more to his Savior, to his imagination, to his I am, persisting in wish fulfilled by shutting out the 3D world of the crowd. What's significant here is, remember, he's blind. So he's shutting out. He can't see the 3D world. He sh that's, that's the other meaning of being blind. You're shutting out, shutting the door 
to the 3D world. Remember that the Bartimaeus is blind, in other words, blind to the 3D world of doubt and limitations. This is big. As you persist in the assumed state of wish fulfilled, feeling it real, he kept crying out. You keep feeling it real. You persist in it. Wow. So then what does Jesus say? Call him here. Whoa. He's referring to Bartimaeus. He's saying this to his disciples. Call him here. Bartimaeus goes within to his I am and rises into consciousness. Your I am doesn't go to you. You go to it. You rise to your I amness. Right? Bartimaeus goes within to his I am and rises in consciousness to his imagination to Jesus. Call him here. This is what Neville Goddard says. A desired state of consciousness cannot rise to you. You must rise to it. Call him here. It's Bartimaeus rising to that I am awareness. It's you rising to your state of consciousness. It can't come to you. You've got to call it forth. You've got to declare it, assume it, and then persist in it. Right? Jesus, son of David, he cried out all the more, have mercy on me. He persisted in his wish fulfilled all the more. Despite the crowd saying, Bartimaeus, keep quiet. You shouldn't approach Jesus like that. Do you hear it? Saying, say, stay in your little world. Stay as your little self. Have those doubts and fears take you over. That's big. Take, and then, so now you hear the crowd say, hear this, Take courage, stand up, he is calling for you. In other words, the crowd now is churning, <laughs> supporting it. Take courage, stand up, he is calling you. What does that mean? The crowd in this case now means transcending those thoughts of limitation. You're transcending those doubts as you persist in it. As Bartimaeus persisted in the state of wish fulfilled, the state of already being healed of blindness, he's transcending any doubts of fear or limitations. Take courage. Stand up. He is calling for you. Your I am awareness. This is you fusing to your desired state in your imagination. Fusing with that I am consciousness. Fusing your desire to your wish fulfilled, right? And then it said here about Bartimaeus, throwing aside his cloak, he jumped up and came to Jesus. Wow! Jumped up, rose in consciousness, came to Jesus. Notice the tense here. He came to Jesus, right? The merging with your wish fulfilled, or in other words, it's done, right? Look at it. It's past tense. He came. It's done, they're merged. Wow, that's powerful. Throwing aside his cloak, throwing aside the 3D world, the body, which is represented by the body or the cloak. And then he jumped up, he rose in consciousness. Very powerful. And then it, Jesus said, says to Bartimaeus, what do you want me to do for you? Wow. This is a big shift. You, knew, you no longer are desiring it and wanting it from a state of lack and limitation. Right? You're wanting it now from that higher perspective, from that I am perspective. Right? Your, I am, your I am is asking, what do you want? You can have it, but with total faith and conviction now. I want, and this is what Bartimaeus says, total conviction, absolute faith. I want to regain my sight. In other words, I want to regain my vision, my I am awareness, my absolute knowing. Then what does Jesus say? Go. Your faith has made you well or whole. Right? Jesus often said this on his healings. Right? Why? What is that? What's the significance there? That's Jesus, your I am, not taking credit for it. It's you with your conviction in your imagination. It's your faith that made you whole. Right? Jesus doesn't take credit here. It's your faith in your I am. It's in faith in your imagination that has made you well or that has manifested your wish fulfilled and created that state. So big. Immediately it's said that he regained his sight and began following him on the road. Bartimaeus regained his sight immediately and began following what? His I am awareness. He began walking by faith and not by sight of the 3D world. That's big. The knowing and the faith as a dis disciple, or in other words, with his dis disciplined mind. Right? That's what it represents, your disciplined mind. You're now walking with that disciplined mind. You're walking by faith, not by sight of appearances. That's what we're talking about. That's what we mean by do nothing except this. Manifesting the Neville Got It way. I am your host, Tom Karen, and this is the Be Something Wonderful Studio of Higher Consciousness, where we help you level up and become the best version of yourself. Don't forget to subscribe, hit the notification button, like, and share our videos. That's how we get our message out. 
You can hit us up on Facebook at Be Something Wonderful, on Instagram and Twitter at Tom Karen. And you can visit our website anytime at TomKaren.com or BeSomethingWonderful.com. Until next time, with great love, with great light and infinite gratitude, this is Tom. See you soon.